taken some class or another, you had to have to, to get into nursing. Um, and so this is just really, the Cornell notes is just a reference to show you how to take notes. Um, and it's basically having headers on the left and taking your notes on the right. And the idea is to cover those, um, cover those things on the left. Oh, I don't know my password. So I want you to go through those. I'm going to go through the nursing process first because that seems to escape a lot of people. Professor, do we need to wear the uniform for this class? Uh, you do not need to wear the uniform for this class. You need to wear your lab coats for your lab in the afternoon. For this class? No, not for this class. For 104 and 105. Regarding the lab, do you know where we be? Um, the basic skills lab is upstairs, right across from the elevators. Thank you. 
All right, guys, let's go over the nursing process real quick. You're going to be using this all through your nursing career. Uh, the nursing process is just a way to organize what you're doing. Okay, you're getting introduced to it in this class, A, because it's your first nursing class, and B, because it does have to do, you will use it in pharmacology as well. Um, you can't videotape because I'm camera shy. Um, you cannot record in second semester. I was very strict about that last semester. Um, uh, you can record this class if you want to. Well, I'm excited to put it in the syllabus that you couldn't. And I'm like so recording. I saw you in here. Yeah. Um, so just use audio, please. Okay. Because um, I can see myself. It's very unnerving. <laughs> Um, and I hate public speaking, believe it or not. I think it's kind of okay. <laughs> no, they can only see me. No. Okay. Audio. But we can get the slides from somewhere. The slides are on the, you can download the slides all you want. They're on. They're on the module. Is it possible for you to upload the slides as a PDF? Yeah. It makes it easier on the iPad to open it in a oh. app than the PDF. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Most people ask me to download to upload the PowerPoints because I can't yes, print out the notes pages like this. Yes, uh -huh. and we can also edit. Yeah, well, no, you can't edit my slides. <laughs> <laughs> make news. <laughs> make news. Not to edit. Um, so the nursing process is just a way to organize what you're doing. Um, the acronym for it is API, A P I E. The A is for assessment, the P is for planning, the I is for implementation, and the E is for evaluation. So let's take pharmacology for instance. You're giving someone a new drug for the first time, let's say insulin or something. Um, what assessment data might you want to get? So there's Just subjective and objective. Subjective is is what? It's on the patient. Yeah. patient. What are patients? Oh, he's getting cancer. Symptoms. Symptoms. Okay. Okay. Apparent to the patient. Okay. What are objective? Another person. Practitioner. Physician notes. It's a lab test. Okay. Nurses. Lab test. Objective information is hard information. It is not an opinion. It's hard information. It's your vital science. It's your lab results. Two facts. Okay. Facts. Just the facts is objective. Subjective is what you're observing. Okay. Patients crying. Um, Patients um, expresses fear. Those things are subjective, things that you are actually observing. <laughs> the what is it? If she 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 if Symptoms, you're looking at their symptoms. Are they pale? Are they diaphoretic? Are they pink, warm, and well confused? Part of your assessment. Um, what current medications are they on? Um, any past health history? How long have they been diabetic? How long have they had asthma? Were they just diagnosed? Um, patient's environment. Who did they live with? Is there someone there to help them? Primary language and communication is also very important, especially when you're teaching. Yep. What's the matter? What do you find in this uh, prescribed uh, uh, medicines in the in the patient chart? Would you consider that uh, uh, objective data, or is 
and the no, that's subjective. And the reason it's subjective is because just there's just because there's a list of medications in there, or just because a patient tells you they're taking a med, doesn't mean it's so. Okay, you're not at the house every day watching them take it three times a day, the correct dosage, the correct. That would be objective, but no one's going to do that. Okay, so it becomes subjective because of that. Objective, your physical assessment, those are your vital signs. Um, lab tests, diagnostic studies, x-ray, that's like, that's the hard evidence. That's your objective data. So that's all part of the A part, the assessment part. <clears throat> Nursing diagnoses, do any of you have any idea what these are? Any idea? Just say no if you don't. No. The first day of nursing school. I'd be surprised if you did. <laughs> nursing diagnoses are what you will be competent to diagnose. They are not medical diagnoses. They are usually based on biophysical, social, psychosocial um, things. And there's a list. Did you all get your nursing diagnosis handbooks? Okay. Where will we get those from? A bookstore. Where, where, where did Those it? will be on your book list. Um, it'll be on your book list in 104 or 105, one of those. Oh, it's probably in the bundle. Probably in the bundle. Um, some other websites you might want to explore, uh, Nanda Nursing Diagnosis dot, Nanda Nursing Diagnosis List dot net. Nanda is N-A-N-D-A. Can you repeat that? Nanda Nursing Diagnosis List dot net. There's a specific list that they come up with every two years. Alteration in comfort, knowledge deficit, anxiety. Um, there's there's a whole list of them and they're divided into systems, into body systems. You'll become very familiar with them because they'll be using them for care plans and concept mapping. Um, I would suggest looking in your book, getting familiar with it, looking online. Um, there is nothing you can't find on YouTube. Nothing. So go on there, how to write a care plan. Nursing diagnosis. Because, you know, it's funny, and I'm probably on YouTube somewhere, much to my dismay, um, because I had to do a bunch of stuff in my bachelor's, my math, and my math, master's program. I had to do a lot of videos that I had to present, and they had to be online through YouTube. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's nothing you can't find on YouTube. Use it to your heart's content. Um, there is a new list of nano diagnoses, and they're not new, new, they don't replace, but they all add some or take some away. Um, and they come out every two years. The last one came out in 2015. So if you buy the book for 2015, you're all set to go. If you have the book from 2013, 14, whatever it is, that's okay. You'll just have more options if you have the more current ones. Um, the new one, actually, for 2015, has 26 new diagnoses. So that tells you how many they, they can add, and 13 of them got revised. <coughs> so after you do your assessment, and you've discovered that your diabetic patient um, has never taken insulin and doesn't know anything about it or how to administer it or whatever, um, one of your nursing diagnoses might be deficient knowledge in how to self-administer insulin. That's an actual nursing diagnosis. So deficient knowledge can be related to anything that you've assessed on any type of patient. I'm just using this because we happen to be dealing with a diabetic patient that has a new insulin order. So now you come up with a nursing diagnosis. So the next part is P, the planning. The planning, the main thing you need to remember about planning is it's always in terms of the patient. It's not what you're planning to do. It's what you're planning to see happen with the patient. So it's always um, it's always goal setting. So this is a um, actual example. The patient will independently administer prescribed dose of albuterol, and ask the patient apparently, um, by the end of the first session of instruction. Very specific. What change do you expect to see? Um, you need to give it a timeline, something that's measurable. Don't say by the end of the week or, or whatever. Make it specific by the end of the second te teaching session, um, by the end of the shift, um, if you're doing something that they can learn that fast. 
<laughs> the planning is goals and they're patient-centered. What you expect to see as a goal for the patient, not what you're going to do as a nurse. The patient-centered, expected change. The patient has to agree. You can't just tell them to do something. Or you're going to have non-compliance. That's just a whole other. You don't want that. Uh, realistic and measurable. Shared with other healthcare providers. It's going to be on your nursing care plan, so I'm going to get shared. Realistic deadlines, I went through that. Um, and it has the components for evaluation. Patient, so on the albuterol, it said patient independently self administers albuterol by the end of teaching session. That's observable. Patient knows how to give albuterol. That's not really observable, it's very subjective. Okay, so keep them very specific. Um, implementation is the nurse. This is what the nurse is going to do. Okay, well, the nurse is not administering it in this case because we're teaching them how. And this is really all pharmacology is with implementation is teaching. So, self administration always requires return demonstrations. Um, diet, you're going to talk about food interactions. We're going to be all over the label container, anyways. Side effects, what to look for. Um, the problem with side effects, especially with some of the geriatric population, I saw this in both of my parents um, who have both passed on now. But my mom used to read all the side effects and she would act out every single one of them. I'm like, no, mom, you don't have that. Well, it says right here. I'm like, no. So, so sometimes it arms them with a little too much knowledge, but you need to tell them side effects, especially if it's stuff like drowsiness, um, confusion, lethargy. Okay. And you also want to teach someone else, not just the patient. There needs to be a backup. Um, some people don't have that luxury and you're kind of stuck there. But if there's a backup, if there's someone else in the house or a neighbor that the, that the family wants to bring in with them, um, and the family has to initiate the neighbor thing, that's the whole HIPAA thing, uh, which is patient privacy. Um, you know, it's, it's good to have a backup. You always want a backup if possible. Um, cultural and genetic considerations. The biggest cultural thing I see is time. Some cultures have zero appreciation for time. And that's okay. That's their culture. You hear a lot of people say, oh, they run on Hawaiian time. Or I have a friend that's Brazilian. She runs on Brazil time. She's always an hour late. If I have an event, I tell her it's an hour earlier, and she's there on time. It works. Um, so don't be offended that time isn't of the essence to your patients. In some cultures, it's just not. Um, but you have to instill the importance that if they're on a medication every eight hours, it should be close to every eight hours. And you'll see when you go to give meds, you'll have a half hour on each side. So if you have a med that's due at eight o'clock, you can give that med anywhere from 7.30 to 8.30. That's a standard of practice. Because no one expects, especially if you have four patients, five patients, how are you gonna give eight o'clock meds to five different patients at eight o'clock? So that's why we have that little leeway. Um, so you, you kind of want to instill your patients that yeah, Q8 hours might not be exactly Q8 hours, but it should be, you know, seven to eight hours, nine maybe, pushing it, but um, really try to instill it in them, having respect for their culture at the same time. <clears throat> um, so please don't put this on any of your care plans. Helpful, like helpful and helpful points to remember. This is all the teaching you would normally do, and it looks like a lot, but really when you start doing it, it's not that much. But please don't list all these on your care plans. There's like four pages to follow. Um, take medications prescribed. If you have questions, call. Okay, same thing with the splash. If questions, call, text, email me, something. Key medication, original label container. If they can't get that little cap off, then the pharmacy needs to repackage the container with one of the non-adult, well, adult proof, <laughs> non-child proof caps. Okay, they can't just take it and put it in another container that's not labeled. That's very dangerous. Um, some of these are quiz questions, by the way. <clears throat> Out of reach of children. That seems like common sense, but I can't tell you how many kids we get into our ER that got a hold of grandpa's, you know heart pills or whatever, or anti-seizure medication, or mom's antipsychotics, or, you know, and then we have the older kids, of course, who take them on purpose, um, trying to commit suicide, uh, but they should really be kept out of reach of children. 
Um, and things you want to do in your assessment is asking them like, okay, what drugs do you take? Fine. People look at that as what medications have been prescribed to me. That's not all we want to know. A lot of people take herbal supplements. Um, my friend got pregnant by accident because her Wellbutrin interacted with her birth control pills and she didn't know it until it was too late. Um, so we really want to know what kind of herbal supplements they're taking, um, any kind of over-the-counter things that they're taking, whether it's aspirin or, you know, because if you have a, a patient that you're, you're um, prescribing, that the doc's prescribing Coumadin to, which is a blood thinner, yeah. we want to know if they're on aspirin. Yeah. You can't take aspirin and Coumadin, you'll bleed out, you'll die. Um, so we need to know things like that. Uh, bring all medications with you. Um, sometimes we tell them to bring a list, um, but if they can bring all the medications in a Ziploc, that's even better because their list that they've so carefully created may have a typo in it, and instead of BID, it says QID, or you know, instead of daily, it says twice a day. Um, so we want to compare, and I ask them to bring both. Often bring the list and bring the meds. So I can compare, it's like doing a medication reconciliation. I'm looking at what you think you're supposed to be taking, and I'm looking at your pill bottles, and, and that gives you a much more clear picture. Uh, know why you're taking the medication. Um, be able to explain to them in layman's terms while they're taking why they're taking it. Okay, what with blood pressure pills, you want to tell them that it lowers your blood pressure, not that it acts on your angiotensin and receptor, blah blah blah. We're not going into all that. Layman's terms, please. Um, we want to know if they drink and smoke. These interact with a lot of medications. And some people actually think, oh, if I'm on pain pills, I'll just chase it with a glass of wine, so I'll make it even better. Then they don't wake up. And that kind of sucks. It doesn't happen every time, but it can happen to like really thin people. Um, remember, if you have more like meat on you and stuff, um, sometimes it takes longer to absorb the drugs. So like really thin, frail um, adults and even kids um, that are really frail and thin, um, oftentimes it doesn't take much to overdose them on medication. <coughs> uh, this just shows you what smoking can interact with. Um, if they're on Theophylline, I'm assuming they have asthma and I'm wondering why they're smoking anyways. But you'd be surprised. <clears throat> and I actually worked in the hospital long enough where I mem remember people smoking in the hospital in bed. <laughs> Without oxygen. <laughs> Maybe still not smoking in the hospital. Terrible. <clears throat> um, so this is just kind of your basic checklist for teaching um, drug therapy to your patient. And this is just kind of what everything I went through just now. <clears throat> uh, remember, return demonstration is the most um, definitive way to evaluate someone. And this, especially like Parents, when I teach parents to drop medications for their kids, the syringes, we're all used to syringes, or you will be. Um, parents, not so much. Um, it's very um, difficult sometimes to get the measurement of the syringe, so having the return demonstrate is absolutely um, valuable. Um, medication schedule, if they get up at seven o'clock, don't have the first dose at nine o'clock, or you know, try to combine it with something so they remember. Okay, I take this with breakfast, or oh, I take this when I leave for school, or you know, try to combine it with something so it's not a whole separate task that they have to do. And you'll see that when we do our meds, like the hospital, we do them on like BID. We'll do eight and twenty. Um, oh, eight and twenty. So eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the evening. Um, but if we have like some of our teenage patients, they don't want to wake up at eight o'clock. They're like, eh, hey, I'll be up at ten. So we'll make their meds 10 and 10. No big deal. You're going to have better compliance if the patient is more agreeable to your schedule. Uh, uh, have them write it down. Uh, have them have a schedule. Some people like to keep a thing on the refrigerator and check off their medications. Um, some elderly people, my parents are a great example, they are on so many medications. They have one of those little pill boxes. My mom had one for 30 days. And there is, you know, it's like playing, playing Candy Crush with all the little you know, boxes and everything. Um, but sometimes they need that um, to be able to, and that's right after three slides ago when I said, don't put them in any other container. Um, I'm talking about like their daily, like their maintenance drugs. 
like a lot of them are antihypertensive, um, anti-cholesterol meds, things like that. Um, oftentimes, elderly people will have them put them in a medication thing so their members take them all. Um, and also, some of them have like alarms now, so it's like a, a round thing, and it pops open at the right time, and the alarm goes off, and they, that's when they know they're supposed to take their medication. But those are also very helpful. Um, community resource drug hotline is a good one. In case you overdose or take the wrong thing with the wrong thing. Um, Development and support backup system. I talked about that having someone else in the house, knowing or knowing how to give insulin, knowing how to you know if you have a, a patient that's gone into a diabetic heat out the doses and they need insulin, it's good to have someone in the house that also knows how to give it. Um, albuterol. If someone's wheezing so badly they don't have the breath to get up and go get their inhaler, they'll have someone else that knows how to do that and set that. Um, evaluation, did you meet your goal? That's all I'm asking. If your goal was patient, we'll be able to self-administer insulin by end of uh, second teaching session. Um, and it's the end of the te second teaching session and they still don't get it. Goal not met. That's okay. It's okay for your goal not to be met. You just reset another one. Um, and some of it is maybe the patient's not ready to learn. That's probably the most important thing. If your patient's not ready to learn, you're not going to get anywhere. If they're overwhelmed with their diagnosis, or they don't have the cognition to understand what you're saying. Um, can they read? That's not the most important, but you do want to assess that. The most important thing is, is are they ready to learn? Might be a good, good question. So, what's a correctly written goal? Which one? Um, it's literally the most long drawn out one, yes, <laughs> because it's that specific. Okay, and you're looking at the change that you expect, and that's patient will independently administer. Um, you're looking at a measurable time at the end of a one hour instruction. Sometimes all it takes is 30 minutes or an hour of instruction, and boom, you're done, you can go home. Sometimes that's all to start teaching it. And it's realistic for this patient, anyways. <clears throat> so, okay, which one will we not include? There's just one. Which one is really, really not of concern a, to the patient? A, a. a. Don't tell them. And I get asked this all the time. Well, how much is it going to cost to transport my kid? And I'm like, really? Well, if we don't, you might die. I mean, and, and cost is like. Uh, and no, I don't want to be stuck from a parent with a $15,000 bill for transport. Um, but Medi-Cal and Medicaid and all those services, that's what they're made for, to help cover that. And if it's life-threatening. And the cost of drugs, um, you know, sometimes we'll get, well, I took this drug to my pharmacy and they don't have it, or they don't cover it, or my insurance doesn't cover it. And at that point, we can say, hey, is there something different that is on their insurance company's formulary? Because there's a lot of similar drugs um, and especially with like heart medications, uh, like there's a lot of different beta blockers. So if they don't cover one beta blocker, maybe they cover another. Um, so we can look at it that way. Um, and we often don't know the cost of drugs. I happen to know what the cost of drugs is on a pharmacy, but we don't tell our patients that because some of them might try to skip a pill or two because that way they're saving, they're saving money. They had an idea, they had an idea. But we never discuss the cost of patients ever. Okay. So what comes first? You said I said them put in order for you. That's, that's the exact order. That's the planning and implementation evaluation. Um, so what did I say was the most important thing? See, they're ready. They're not ready. You're not going to get anywhere. So I want you to um, open up the Cornell notes on your, on your own time. Just open them up and, um, and kind of look at that PowerPoint and how to take notes. Um, that's not how I take notes, but you know it's it's what the college has opted for taking notes. Cornell is Cornell University, in case you weren't putting that together. Um, 
When I study, I open my book, and keep in mind, the publishers make the book really big so they can charge more money. Um, but when you're looking at your book, there's a lot of fluff, and that's okay. And what I usually do is I skim through it, but I pay really a lot of attention to the tables, to the boxes, to the <coughs> pictures, because so that's the stuff that they're obviously trying to get across. I do the NCLEX questions at the end, I do the case studies, I go online and I keep doing the NCLEX questions. And I do the same stuff that you guys do in the class. I go through and do it and it's easy for me because I've done it a hundred times, but I do it so that I know that it makes sense. And if there's something that doesn't make sense, I will contact the publisher and be like, mm, that's outdated. Or you actually put, because some students will come back and go, I thought you said this, but when I took the quiz, it said this was wrong. And it's like, and that's just because the publisher was made a typo. Not uh, they're giving you incorrect information. Um, but that's stuff I need to know. So if you're running into stuff that doesn't mesh with what I've said or what you're reading on my slides, then you need to tell me so that I can share it with everyone else and so I can get back to the publisher. Okay. Um, God, I feel like we have such a little time and we don't have next week. So just for next week, just read the chapter two and do the quiz and the case study. The case study um, is also on YouTube. Everything is pretty much on YouTube. Um, the case study uh, is actually the, the uh, diabetic patient, I think, that we just discussed. And it basically kind of asks you um, about the nursing process. It's pretty easy. But if you guys don't understand it, please contact me. All right? I don't want you to wonder. I don't want you to wait till the last minute. Please don't wait till the last minute for next month. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for you to just pull up real quick the website you were referring to for the key uh, pharmacology? Um, is that possible? For Evolve? Yeah. Right. So that's the website. Okay. Evolve.elsevier.com. Yeah, and then and then you'll have. Well, I have a lot of them because I have a lot of classes. But um, you will. It's resources. So you have two resources. No, that no, that's that's mine. That's okay. This the top one is the one that I did just to see what you guys would be looking at. So I took my new book and I registered as a student. Uh huh. And this is mine for. But when you go in. Yeah. So this is the student view. Um. So you'll see resources here. And I think will, we might have free access to that one. Okay. Without without the code. Yeah. yeah. If you do, that's great. You want us to go to chapter two? I'm just um, showing you like so there should be review questions. And there's only like probably, I think maybe eight or something. And I don't see your, I don't have it set up so that I can see your NCLEX questions. That's for your own practice. And trust me, the more you do, the higher your success rate will be on the NCLEX. So those are what the questions look like. And you may even be able to take it more than once. Yeah, not sure. Yeah, you can yeah. probably do yeah. more than once. The quiz is on etudes, not more than once. <laughs> Don't confuse the two. I might give you a break on the first quiz, but after that, you need to follow directions because all of those. Okay. The quiz will be in chapter two or is it chapter? The yet? quiz is chapter one and two combined. It's only ten questions, and I think they're fairly easy. Um, we have a working cow ranch there, so um, when 
I didn't think I was going to teach pharmacology, I took that week off to bring the cattle back. I'm going to go round up some cattle, sorry. <laughs> Uh, what's the name of the guy whose uh, article is online? Uh, it's actually Dennis Quaid. He's an actor. Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. He's an actor. You know, I have the video on there for you. The video is on under module three. You can view it on there. It's 53 minutes long. Just turn it on. Do something around the house or, or whatever while it's on, and just kind of listen to it. Chapter two the case and I will shoot off something towards the end of the week. This is, hey, don't forget, this is what do. Okay, but enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I'm going to think about all the high school right now. There's a lot of people in the area. 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 There's a lot of I don't know. I think you yeah. I can't remember. Yes. I can't I can't remember. I can't remember. I couldn't do you have your iPad or whatever with you? I started off with Gonzalez, but I ended up having to go back to the Okay. I love to because I didn't get a class. But here is kind of like, like, Okay, you guys. Okay, so class is over at nine o five. Um, my office hours are until ten o five. Um, if you go to my office, which is two eighteen I, and I'm not there when I'm supposed to be, text me, call me. I might have just run over to the student union, or I might have gone to get coffee, or whatever. Um, you can make appointments with me. Um, I'm happy to come in. Um, I, if I'm in my office, it's an open door policy. Just come and knock. Okay. Um, otherwise, please, please, please. I'm here on Wednesdays too. I'm going to say I have a question. Yes. So, uh, uh, so we're doing quiz and the case studies. Yes. Where, 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 where for the case study one? It's on. It's on YouTube. YouTube. Yep. The what? The case study? I haven't opened anything yet. Oh, oh, I'm going to okay. open them during my office hour. Okay, okay. I'm going to open them. Okay. okay. But is it going to be under assignments? It's going to be under um, assignments, test, and surveys. The case study is a Dennis Quaid. No, that's for like history. Oh. The case study is like some. Yeah. Insulin, how are you going to use the nursing process? And, okay. and I just want you to focus on, you know, some of the testing, your health assessment, I'm going to ask about previous meds, blah, blah, blah. And so for planning, you're going to give me what you want to see this patient do for uh, insulin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. The quiz is done in groups, and so how are we going to find out our groups? Okay, so you guys, with your groups, um, get together with your friends, whatever, make your groups. Um, I want you to. Um, you can do that now for you for you people that don't want to you want me to make the groups i want you to send me your names through text just say hey i'm not in a group send me text hey i'm not in a group okay and i will assign you groups is it four exact or can we do anywhere from two to five yeah uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah because okay. we could, uh, um, uh -huh. there are 40 people in this class allegedly Did you never ever show up? Oh, hi. <laughs> right, you never showed up. Yeah. Um, there are 40 students in this class, so I want something that is a multiple of 40. <laughs> five, so five, 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 five
have five, you can have eight groups of five, you can have 10 groups of four. I just think the larger the groups get, the harder it is yeah. to coordinate. So that's why I picked four. Okay. Partners. Two is a little, I mean, two that I have like 20 groups. It's kind of out there. So that's why I'm on groups of four. Does that make sense? Okay. So I expect you to text me, email me, call me something by the end of the day if you are not in a group by then. Because I need to assign you groups. Okay? Okay, you can personal message me too if you want, but remember that's like the least effective way because I actually have to open that up and check it. Okay. If there's no other pressing questions, you may go or stay oh, off your class or maybe your next class is in here anyways, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm missing my No, like, so, like, I may seem like, no, but I'm, I'm kind of like nervous. I'm very feisty. Really? Okay. Wait, now I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. My yeah, no, I mean, it's okay. I understand. Thank you. 
I'll be right back. I'm still recording. Oh my gosh. 